Have you folks seen the news lately about Twitter? Not about the Musk buyout transaction, but the fact that Twitter has been fined $150 million for misusing two-factor authentication data. The Department of Justice said that Twitter violated a 2011 FTC order that prohibited Twitter specifically from deceptively using personal information. We'll get into this a bit more, but I've been warning about this in so many videos. And finally, one big tech player pays the price. It's not perfect, but perhaps it's a heads up for the true abusers of 2FA, in my opinion, which are Google and Facebook. Well, not likely. They get away with it because 2FA isn't used in the same blatant way as Twitter. But mark my words, two-factor authentication is now the bane of our privacy. It is ripe for abuse and it is being abused and the government will not protect you. Which is why I apply defensive strategies to limit its threat. Do you want to understand the threat and the defensive strategy? Stay right there. I'm on the platform odyssey.com. I'm now a top creator on there. In case I get the platform, please follow me there using the link in the description. My company sells privacy products like Bytes VPN, a metadata free email, Brax Mail, and our new product is the Brax2 privacy phone that can shield you from Google and others. Brax2 is now available on Amazon and also on my app, Brax Me. The links are in the description. Two-factor authentication as experienced by most of you and as used in most apps means you provide your phone number to the platform. Then they text you a code and that is used to validate your identity by a secondary means. Hence the term two-factor authentication. This appeared to be benign so many years ago. Facebook required accounts to provide a phone number supposedly for your account security. And if you didn't provide a phone number, you lost access to your account. Google did the same. And lately they have enforced an even stricter rule with YouTube creators. It is not enough that we give a phone number. We're also now required to use a Google authentication app on our phones. I'm sure this is meant to apply to all users at some point, but they've started with YouTube creators last year. As usual, some unsophisticated cybersecurity beginner is going to come here and criticize me and say that without 2FA, we will be hacked. And as usual, such people completely misses the point. It isn't that 2FA has no security benefit. It does. But in the process, big tech has found a way to cancel our privacy under the pretext of security. In other words, they abuse the 2FA and we have no choice but to suffer the abuse. Twitter did it blatantly. Twitter's version of 2FA was simply based on phone numbers. And to be frank with you, their limited access to information meant the only way to make use of the 2FA for financial gain was to use the phone numbers themselves and they got caught. So it cost them 150 million in an FTC settlement. Now you would think this would prevent future misuse of 2FA by other companies like Google and Meta slash Facebook. However, unlike Twitter, Google and Facebook have no particular need to sell your phone numbers for advertising. Google and Facebook's goals related to the 2FA data is simply to profile you, identify you, and then track you across multiple devices. Thus, it will be very hard for regulators to say they're abusing 2FA by selling phone numbers because they're not selling it. The phone number itself is secondary. I'm sure their lawyers analyzed this to Gazoo to make sure they've dotted every I and crossed every T. Let me explain why 2FA is a privacy canceling feature with certain companies. It's not really a threat that applies to all companies. A bank imposing 2FA on you is all good and necessary. Other companies will hopefully be dissuaded from selling your phone numbers in fear of recreating what happened with Twitter. But Google and Facebook are a different story. Originally, in my opinion, Facebook initiated 2FA primarily to verify accounts. If a person has multiple Facebook accounts, then there will be a problem coming up with a phone number for each account. Facebook thrives on a verified identity. 
They claim this is for your safety so that you know you're dealing with a real person using his real name. By the same token, if the company is tracking your activities, this same identity means they have a precise profile of your thoughts, ideas, and actions. They know precisely which people on the platform have certain political views. They know which communities these people circulate in. They also know which ones to shadow ban and manipulate. It's a double-edged sword. In my mind, it is always too dangerous to allow any company too much information about any of us because it can be misused and is often misused. Facebook, in case you forgot, has the capability to see just about every website you visit, just like Google, so it can even track you outside of Zucking Zuckbook. 2FA provided a great benefit to Facebook and allowed them to grow their platform for a while. Each user is encouraged to upload contact lists of friends, so your uploaded contact list includes the phone numbers and real names of your contacts. Sometimes your contact lists also have birthdays and addresses. Well, if you upload to Facebook, Zuck can then find out everyone you're connected to. A simple matter then to do friend recommendations. But now you're... But now you're locked into a community of contacts, so associations are made relating to your schools, your relatives, your affiliations, your clubs, locations, and so on. Mind-boggling expansion of user tracking, and all with real names and a crowdsource verification of who you are. The way this is all matched? Of course, the 2FA phone numbers will be matched to the contact list phone numbers. The FTC likely will not be able to prove it is used for advertising because it is indirect. Your phone numbers are used for identity tracking and eventual profiling, which is then used to feed ads and messaging on Zuckbook itself. I wish my fear was just about advertising, but giving someone control of your ideas gives a lot of power to a Facebook to manipulate the world in a big way. Again, that's the real evil with a Facebook. It's not just that they track everything you do, they also know exactly who you are and thus allow specific message targeting and spying. In other words, you cannot protect your identity. Now, this 2FA phone number is also made to track you across the internet over multiple devices. I'll get into that a little later. But first, let's focus on the other major 2FA threat, and that is Google. Many years ago, I can't even remember now, maybe around 2007, Google started implementing the Google ID. All Google platforms started to get this universal login. I've already been bothered by this because it draws a direct connection between your search activities, your YouTube watching activities, and even actions on other sites like Google developer platforms, AdSense, Google Analytics, and other services you may need to use related to Google. It was hard to even separate work from personal. Your Google ID is also, of course, your email. And today, the majority of the email addresses are on Gmail. And today, so much of your life is captured from grade school on using a school-based Gmail account, Google Docs, Google Photos, and so on. Our entire lives are captured by Google and all with one Google ID. Now, what does this have to do with 2FA? Well, like Facebook, Google needs a verified identity. Google does not try to force you to use your real name, although indirectly they do when you are forced to set up a Gmail account in your schools, which will use your real name. They can also infer your identity from the credit cards you associate with your account, for example, to pay on the Google Play Store. The importance of a verified identity is that it enables Google to assign the activity profile to one specific person. This has allowed Google to specifically know so much information about each person in the world that uses Google products. For example, not only was Google able to identify every anti-vax person, this was even mapped out to specific locations and specific Google IDs. I'm sure they have a map of everyone with particular political beliefs, also mapped to specific locations. This should be obvious. Your phones track your locations and you cannot stop it. So let's make this clear. Facebook and Google know what you believe and even what you do and where you do it. Now this expands into a bigger problem. 
When Google did 2FA, they wanted to expand this to a verified identity beyond just the phone number. They do this by forcing you to use a mobile device. 2FA makes certain that you always have a phone near you. If they can tie your activities to a mobile device, they can then just track the mobile device. They don't even need the phone number. Your mobile device has a fixed and unique identifier that can isolate a specific phone. One example of an identifier is the IMEI or International Mobile Equipment Identity. So, since your Google Android or iOS phone is logged into Google on a Google app, the app gets access to this and other identifiers and verifies it is you. When you use a device on a computer, you use the same Google ID and whether you're logged in or not, the IMEI is always known. So the data from all your computing and internet activities are combined together with extra information on the phone, which includes its current location and IP address. Notice that the phone number has been made to be irrelevant. Again, the phone number was just there to force you to use the phone. This is why for YouTube creators, we cannot even use other authentication apps like Authy or even a YubiKey without tying it to the Google Authenticator app. They need the app because the app has verified your IMEI. So the use of 2FA on your phone is basically saying you accept being chipped by Google. Not too different from having the chip embedded under your skin. Facebook, of course, has a similar capability and with their far-reaching collection of data, they have unlimited ways of tracking you through all the meta properties, including Instagram and WhatsApp. The way to blunt this is actually simple, although it requires a change of mindset. Rather than rely on the phone, you rely on a desktop or laptop computer. Since the tracking is built into all Google Android phones and iOS, the main way to eliminate all this is to first dump these phones. You do the opposite of what they want. They want you to rely on their phones. You need to not rely on any phone. You can still use a phone, but you need a Google free phone. And fortunately, this is available. I've created a Brax2 privacy phone on my store and this is completely Google free. It does not have this 24 seven Google location tracking and this kind of privacy phone does not have a Google ID. Yet it looks and runs like a normal Android. So this is an example of a device that will deny tracking information to Google. Google and Facebook will still require you to provide a phone number. And then that phone number will be matched against the contact list collected by these platforms to map your relationships with people. Let me also make it clear that it is not your own contact list that's the source, but the contact list uploaded by your friends and associates. So there's no escaping this if you do nothing proactive, but there is a proactive solution. My Brax2 phone happens to be dual SIM. If not, you may have some older phone that you can use as a second phone. The trick is to use a second phone number as your 2FA number for internet platforms, a phone number that is not known to your contacts. And you can leave this second phone off if it's a standard Google Android or iPhone and not use it actively. You can still have your normal primary phone number, but you never reveal the second phone number to anyone else other than for 2FA. Here's the result of all this, and it's a big deal. A Brax2 or other de Google phone will not be able to send telemetry information to Google or Facebook about locations or IMEI. In fact, you cannot install any Google application on a Brax2 phone. Second, there will be no way to identify you through contact lists since no contact of yours will have that phone number. Or if you're lucky, the phone number will have been used by someone else, so you will be identified as that someone else, which is fine. This is my own setup. It cannot be abused by Google with 2FA because I took my precautions. I have no mobile profile that they can discover since I haven't used a normie mobile device in many, many years. All my interactions with Google are on my laptop on Chrome. They only know what I let them know. I'm in control. You can be in control too. Don't let them abuse 2FA. 
Thank you for watching and see you next time.